In this video, we're looking at the Gigabyte Oros Master 16. We're gonna be looking at 4K, 10-bit, 422, 420, 50 frames per second, 30 frames per second, H.264, H.265, 6K, and even some 8K video editing to see how well this laptop plays back footage. And we'll also get into some AI denoise, and we'll be opening up raw photo files inside of uh, Lightroom Classic to see how well this laptop performs. Now, this has the latest Intel Core Ultra 9 to 75 HX, as well as an RTX 5080, so it is a well-equipped device. Now, the first uh, bit of footage that we have pulled up on the timeline is going to be 4K 10-bit, and I'm going to show you the exact media profile. 10-bit 422 H.264 is pulled up on the timeline, and we're going to scrub through this at full quality, and you'll see that this plays back very smooth with zero drop frames. I'm going to pull this over a little bit here so you can see on the timeline. And I'm gonna pull back up the media properties so you can see those. You can see playing back super smooth, no problems. I'm not gonna hang along too long to this footage because I wanna get into the higher resolutions and also the higher frame rate. So really smooth playback there. The next one I'm gonna pull in is going to be the 50 frames per second. Here we go, pulling over. And I'm going to change the sequence settings, clear that out, and I'm going to right click, open up the media properties here. And you can see four, to zero, and this is H.265 footage at 50 frames per second, and this is a 4K resolution. You can see now we have clear, smooth playback on the timeline, playing back very smoothly, no drop frames so far, and this is where we would expect this laptop to be. Now, I'm very curious. The next frame rate we are going to look at is going to be 120 frames per second, and I've not seen a laptop be able to accomplish less than a few hundred drop frames in the first 15 to 30 seconds. So I'm curious if the Gigabyte Oros Master will be capable. So there you go, 30 seconds in, zero drop frames. Let's go ahead and switch over to the 120 frames per second footage. Change sequence settings. And we're gonna go ahead and open the properties so you can see those as well. 10-bit, <clears throat> 422, and we have H.264 on this footage 120 frames per second you can see it's playing back smooth in the timeline full quality but there we go with five seconds we drop some frames 198 drop frames you can start to see it get a bit jumpy as the fans are beginning to ramp up a little bit i'm going to go ahead and grab my noise test Kit. The noise test kit is called a decibel reader. My brain went foggy. All right, so we have our decibel reader here. 30 seconds in, we've dropped 1,728 frames. Quite a bit of frames dropped in the first 30 seconds. I'm going to go ahead and extend this on the timeline so we can have, let's get back here, uh, about a minute and 30 available to us. I'm going to go ahead and play it back again, see how we do. And we're going to go ahead and check the decibel reader here. All right, so it's got it turned on, and I'm going to stop talking so we can see the decibels. All right, so just under 48 decibels, not too loud, uh, really good fan noise, and it's only dropping 471 frames in roughly the first 30 seconds. I got a little bit of fan picked up here now. 476, and in the first 30 seconds, 482. So just under 500 frames, and we're gonna go ahead and check, to check the decibels um, now here. All right, bumped up to just around 50 decibels there. Uh, 45 seconds in, 641 drop frames. So definitely improving once the fans got kicked up and started to cool that CPU, get things processed, it started to handle that footage a lot smoother. And at a minute in, if we're under a thousand, this is handling 120 frames per second quite well. So here we go, one minute in. Yeah, 667, a good handle on 120 frame per second footage, very heavy stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and we're gonna move on to some different footage here. I'm gonna go ahead and open up some 6K B raw footage. Okay, there we go. I'm going to close out that Sony footage as well as the Sony, just so we can have as little extra work on the CPU as possible. I'm going to go ahead and play back the timeline. 6K footage should handle this easy breezy. Back in here, we can inspect the footage.
You see we're running 12 to 1 VROC compression. This is going to be full 6K quality. And zero drop frames in the first 30 seconds. During my full long test, this dropped zero frames. So I'm going to go ahead and switch things up and jump up to 8K VRAW. And don't you worry, we're getting to the AI denoise test and the raw photo file test here in just a minute. But the next thing we're going to pull up is the 8K footage. 8K B-Raw here. And if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of the Gigabyte Oros Master, you can head down in the description below, click those links. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. I'm always so grateful when y'all use those links. All right, jumping back over, we're going to go ahead and hit play on the timeline here. You can see Jumpy right off the bat, the fans have not kicked up yet. They slowed down a little bit when I closed out the 6K program. Fans are starting to pick up again, and that should smooth out the playback, but it's a little jumpy right now, as you can see. Okay. Let's see, 20 seconds in. Only 85 drop frames, but you can feel that jumpiness. Let's go ahead and run back to the beginning. <clears throat> and we have this noise, this kind of static noise up top here. What I'm going to do is, it'll take a second, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out and I'm going to go to my resolutions. And I'm going to just reopen this project. And let's see if we can get rid of some of that noise. Let's see. Because that was not happening on my initial tests when I was running some playback tests uh, for the initial review of this device. All right, so we're loading up. Uh, I'm going to locate some footage real quick. All right, we're good to go there. And we're back in action. Here is the playback timeline I was looking for. There we go. Okay, much smoother playback. There we go, steering wheel. We have some fan noise. I'm going to go ahead and switch over. Just around 51 to 52 decibels of fan noise. Seeing some drop frames now. About 74 drop frames in the first 30 seconds. Like I said, handling this footage very well. It was just a couple of years ago that 6K was struggling and was unable to play back on these you know, 40, 70, 40, 80 GPUs. And now that we're at this 50, 80 GPU, it's crazy that 8K is barely even struggling. You can see almost a minute in, still only 74 drop frames. We have all of our graphics. We even have some music that is technically playing in the background here. Minute in, still 74 drop frames. So you can see it smoothed out very quickly. Uh, and we have that about 51 to 52 decibels of fan noise. So wow, smooth playback on 8K, absolutely crazy for this laptop. I'm pretty sure uh, off the top of my head, the pricing on this on sale is $28.99. So if looking for an 8K video editing laptop, $28.99. Uh, crazy, crazy good price point for this device. You have two upgradable uh, M.2 slots, you have two RAM slots, great thermal chamber. Uh, it's not just heat pipes, it's a full thermal chamber, so really awesome uh, here on this device. Now we have Lightroom Classic open. I'm going to switch over, I'm going to drag in these 99 raw photo files, okay, and then I'm going to grab my timer, and I'm going to time how long it takes to open up these files. Okay, so there's my timer. You can see that there. Just turn it a little. Oop, turn it a little bit. There we go. Okay, and all are selected. I'm gonna move the timer a little bit so I can see my import button. And I'm gonna click import as I click start. See here, timer going good and stop. It looked like just at about the eight second mark. I had a bit of a half second delay of pushing that button. So eight seconds. Not bad at all. That is fantastic. Um, just for a little context, the Aero 16X did that in about 18 seconds. So that GPU is really working hard as, and the CPU, CPU and GPU both to bring in that footage, working really hard. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna time the AI denoise. And I always have to look for this because it moves since Get rid of this basic detail, maybe effects. Hit 
seconds. There we go. Got it. It's right there. All right. So we're going to go ahead and reset my timer. So eight seconds and we're going to click to noise and go. There we go. All right. So about 9.25 seconds. Not bad at all. And now we're going to go to Photoshop and see how long it takes in Photoshop. So let's see, eight seconds. I'm going to write down some of these numbers before I forget. So, eight seconds, 9.25. And now we're going to go to AI to noise inside of Photoshop. So we're going to pull up our folder, right click. Right click, open with Photoshop. Okay, and then we're going to shift over a little bit. And we got to right click and it'll pull up where AI to noise is. There we go, the detail button. You click the detail button and here we go. All right, three, two, one. This one's looking even faster. All right, seven, about 7.4, I would say. Safe bet, 7.4 on these Photoshop and Lightroom Classic tests. There you have it, super snappy, fast laptop for both video editing and AI denoise and opening up those raw photo files. So if you're looking for a laptop that has great color accuracy, nice glossy bright OLED display, the Gigabyte Oros Master might be the one for you. Remember, links in the description below if you wanna check the live pricing or make a purchase. Of course, if you do, I'll get a small commission but at no extra cost to you. And that's keeps this channel live and the helpful content coming your way. More videos about the Gigabyte devices and others on the channel if you're looking to make a purchase. I'll see you guys in the next video.